Look here, our project boat. Isn't she lovely? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> that's not a boat, that's a paperweight. <laughs> Welcome back to Breaking Waves, formerly known as Sailing the Goose. This week's episode, we head to the boatyard to do some boat shopping. We're going to look at boats. Some things we had to consider. Number one, safety, obviously. We wanted to be safe no matter what happens. A boat that's designed to take care of you in bad weather, then my fear of sailing will no longer be about dying. Number two, space. It'll be about whether or not I'm going to kill Ben. You're not gonna kill me if we get a 34? Well, let's see what the 37s are like. Number three, price. So now that it's come down in price, we're gonna go take a look at it. Hopefully put an end to this process of boat shopping. And number four, trying not to fall in love with every boat we found. Oh, how I love Chianti. I love Chianti. I'm trying not to fall in love with it. I'm not, not in love with it. <laughs> what did I just tell you? <laughs> Don't fall in love with the first boat you see. This is the story of our final contenders. Boat number one. It's a Tanyan. Tayana. Tayana. Um, 37 foot boat. Uh, I think it's 55, listed for 55,000. Um, engine, we're gonna doesn't, see engine doesn't work. Decks it's, need to be replaced. Yeah, it needs some fixing up, but that's why it's cheap, right? And it's a blue water boat. What did you like about the boat? Um, I thought it was a beautiful boat. I think that Tayanas have a really good reputation and that it repowered, decks fixed, probably re-rigged, and just a bit of cosmetic, like replace the cushions on the inside, and... Did you like the layout oh, on the inside? Really. It's what I expected, of like a Blue Water 70s era passage maker. It's but that's one of the trade-offs. So I think if we expecting to put, you know, thirty to forty thousand more into it, that it could become a really sweet boat. But I think that we should look at lots of different types of boats. Which brings us to our next boat, the Pacific Seacraft. Boat number two, Pacific Seacraft, it's a 37. Apparently needs a little bit of work. A little bit of work was an understatement. She was a project boat, which didn't really defer us because it meant that we got a very strong, safe blue water boat for cheaper. But it would have been on the hard for a couple of years. We couldn't have even sailed it back from Anacortes. We would have had to motor. And the state of the engine, we weren't sure how that would go either. She's got some uh, surface rust. You can kind of see where it's been flaking off a little bit in some spots just yeah. from the moisture around the around the belly of the engine for that long a time. But mm -hmm. aside from that, I mean, he ran it on the hard, which is not a test at all. No. I mean, it just means that it turned over, it fired. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's gonna need new rubber. I mean, I mean, mm -hmm. it's... So one of the huge projects on this boat would be the teak decks. Um, you can see that there's screw heads are shovel. And you're saying we'd have to take those out because water white might be pooling in them. So we'd have to take them out clean them out and either replug them or rip up the teak deck, which would be sad, but the alternative option of replacing them is really expensive. So that's an, something to think about. Pacific Seacraft is best known for producing the Creelock line of sailboats. These are the heavy overbuilt offshore cruising designs designed by William Creelock. They have been featured in the world's best sailboats and Fortune Magazine twice selected Pacific Seacraft as a producer of America's 100 best products. Not to mention, their headquarters are in North Carolina, so if you have an issue, you can call them. We looked at different models, layouts, and sizes. Yeah, this is a much heavier duty boat than the last one. It's like decked out. But none of them really quite fit. Get it? Because it's done. Kind of the next boat we checked out was a Canadian built CS36. It feels wide and spacious. Yeah, I don't know why. Got a double spreader. The last boat didn't have that, eh? Eh? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> the CS36 was designed by Raymond Wall in the 80s. It is a great boat that fit both our budget and the amount of space that we were looking for. So what do you think of that boat? I really like it, actually. Yeah. It's The layout of it is just great. Like, it doesn't feel, it feels really spacious, but it feels like it's like just enough, not too much. Yeah, I really like that boat. I like that boat. 
especially for the price. Like it's the only downside to it was that somebody got to it before us. So we kept shopping. So we're on our way to look at this Scepter 41 that we've been watching for a while. It's actually been on the market for a couple years. Um, the price has come down from, I think, almost $200,000 American to one hundred ten. dollars uh, It's underpriced for what it is. Might be a little bit extra for what we need, but it's got a pilot house and we've both fallen in love with it, thinking that it was out of our reach. We are trying very hard not to be emotional, right? And not fall in love with the first boat we find. Too late. Do you love it? It's not the first boat. We've looked at a lot of boats. We've looked at a lot of them. This Scepter 41 is another Canadian built boat whose previous owners took very good care of her and had already circumnavigated the globe once. She came with 190 gallons of water, 130 gallons of fuel, two steering stations, two berths, and a whole lot of space. Shit's so big. The engine, he says, is about halfway through its life. Super beautiful. Awesome layout, really good bones. Needs a bit of updating, but I could see this being a boat that it's been years and years on. I take a lot of pride in. So I love the natural light. Look at, it's so comfortable. I can't get over how comfortable it is. But what would we have to like fix? Like what's a downside to it? So the running rigging would, I would probably want to replace it before we want to go offshore, definitely the standing rigging. He was saying that we probably need to take, step down the mass and sand it all down and grind it all down and repaint it. Is it worth selling your house for? I think so. <laughs> it's more of a question is like, am I, is it worth changing my lifestyle? But yeah, I think it's awesome. I went. on the next episode of Breaking Waves, the boat buying process. So a little bit of disappointing news. Yeah, it would be nice. Well, on my end, we're, we're good to close and we're hoping to take possession today. I'm going to go survey and see trial Kiana. Holy shit, it's hell hitting me. We just bought a boat.